data interpretation practice, pie charts. In this video, let's get started with pie charts. First and foremost, let's understand when will someone choose to present us data in the form of a pie chart. We'll get started with some really easy pie charts in this video and some really easy questions to go with that so that we get warmed up to the idea of working with pie charts. Let's look at more interesting, difficult ones in subsequent videos. A pie chart is nothing but a circle graph, right? You'll have something like this. You're going to break it into parts and tell us what each of these parts is. So that's when someone is going to give us a pie chart. When someone wants to give us information about what each of these constituents contribute to the whole. Let's start with two very simple pie charts in this question. Two pie charts. The first one gives us the number of cars sold in a particular city in a particular month. And the second one tells us the revenue made by selling these cars in dollar terms. The first one is a breakup of these four manufacturers and one category called others in this Gotham city in the month of September in terms of number of cars. The second one tells us for the same four brands and one category called others in terms of dollar value. Whenever you have presented pie charts, pie charts could give us data either in terms of numbers of this kind, the selling, telling it as in terms of number of hundreds of cars. So in the case of Kia, it's going to be 4200 cars. In the case of Kia, in terms of dollars, it's going to be $65 million. So it could be dollar value, it could be number of cars sold, it could be number of people, it could be numbers, or it could very well be percentage. If it's percentage, you actually don't have to do anything. If it is numbers and rupees and population and dollars and like euros, if they're giving it to you in these various forms, then the first step that you're going to do is basically add up all of these pies and find out what is the total in each of these cases. That's the first exercise we're going to do. Let's do that for both these pies. 39 plus 51 is a 90. These two will add up to a 78. 90 plus 78 is a 168 plus 132 is a 300. So 300 hundred cars is what was sold in the city in the month of September. That's nothing but 30,000 cars. So we have a total count of the number of cars sold by four brands and others. Let's do the same exercise for the dollar value that they realized. 85 plus 75 is a 160. 105 plus 65 is a 170. So 160 plus 170 is a 330 plus 170. 500 million dollars is the total dollar value realized by selling these 30,000 cars. So that's the first step. Compute the sum of the parts of both these pies. 300 hundreds, which is 30,000. And the total number of dollars realized by selling them is 500 million dollars. Start with the three questions. All three are easy questions. One and two are very, very easy. The first one is, what is the market share of Suzuki based on the number of cars sold? Number of cars, first buy. So let's not even bother about the second one. How many did Suzuki sell? 132 hundreds. Forget the hundreds because all of them are in hundred terms. Out of how many? Out of the total of 300. So market share based on numbers for Suzuki is 132 upon 300 expressed as a percentage is multiplying it with 100. The two zeros get cancelled. 132 by 3 works out to 44%. So market share of Suzuki based on numbers is 44%. Summarize it in a printed form. Suzuki's numbers, total numbers into 100, 44%. Second one is revenue share. So let's ignore the first pi. Let's look at the second one. Revenue share of Kia in the overall market. How many dollars did Kia make? Kia made $65 million. Out of total, $500 million. So share of Kia in this market is 65 upon 500 times 100. Cancel the zeros. 65 by 5, 13% is the revenue share of Kia in this market. So both are very straightforward, simple questions. Third one is also easy, but a little more difficult than the first and second. Which company has the least per unit cost? Look at it. Suzuki made 170 million. So every number for each of these manufacturers is going to be having this 170, 65 and a million on top. So we don't need to worry about writing that. By selling how many? By selling 132 hundreds. The same will hold good for others. It's going to be 4200, 3600. So don't worry about these extra zeros. So the per unit cost for Suzuki is 170 million upon 132 hundred or the fraction that we are interested in finding out is 170 by 132. This is for Suzuki. Let's run through this for each of these manufacturers. For Toyota, the same thing is going to be 85 upon 39. This is for Toyota. For Hyundai, this number is 75 upon 51. For others category, this is 105 upon 36. This is for the others. And lastly, for Kia, this number is 65 upon 42. This is going to give you this fraction value 
multiplied by million divided by 100 will give you the exact dollar value of the per unit cost. They're trying to find out not the per unit cost in dollar terms. They're interested in finding out which among these five makers has got the least value. So we have to find out of these five fractions, which has the least value. This is where all the comparison ascending order exercises that we did earlier is going to come off use. Look at it. 132 times 2 would have been 264. So this is definitely greater than 1, less than 2. Look at Toyota. 39 times 2 is a 78. So this value is greater than 2. So Toyota is greater than 2, whereas here we have something like Suzuki, which is less than 2. So Toyota cannot be the least cost one. Look at others. 36 times 2 is 72. 36 times 3 is 108. This is way more than 2, whereas here we have a Suzuki, which is less than 2. So we can quickly ignore these two. That's the first step. So let's eliminate what we can quickly eliminate. We've eliminated these two because this is greater than 2. This is close to 3. This is also greater than 2. All that is left is to basically compare the remaining three. 75 upon 51, 65 upon 42, 170 upon 132. Here again, I'll do it two ways. One, 75 upon 50 is a 1.5. So this is close to 1.5. 63 upon 42 is a 1.5. So it's actually greater than 1.5. So if this number had to be a 1.5, 132 times 1.5, 130 times 1.5 is a 195. This should have been a 195 plus to have a value which is close to 1.5. This is only 170. So both these are definitely greater than this. So Suzuki has the least per unit cost. That's one way of going about it. But after coming this far, after eliminating these two, if you want, you can actually go by the cross multiplication method to be absolutely certain. 170 by 132. Let's reduce it, bring it to its least form. This will work out to 85 upon 66. Let's compare that with 75 upon 51. Cross multiply to check out. 85 times 50 is 4250 plus 85, which is 4335. 75 times 66, 75 times 60 is a 4500. So I don't even have to calculate anything more than that. This is going to be greater than 4500. So this is a greater value. We are interested in finding out the least. So this is not the answer. Our answer is going to be between the two, it's 85 by 66, which is Suzuki. Now we've eliminated the 75 by 51 as well. Let's move on to looking at 85 upon 66 compared to 65 upon 42. Again, do the cross multiplication. 85 times 4, 85 times 2 is 170. 178 times 2, 340. This is 3400 plus 170, 3570. 65 times 66 is going to be greater than 4250. So this number is greater, which means we are interested in the least value. 85 by 66 is the least number. So Suzuki has the least cost per unit among the four companies. Before you leave, I want you to do two things. One, sign up as a trial user for Visaco's online GRE course at online.visaco.com. Takes all of three minutes and two steps to get started. And lastly, subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash We keep adding newer questions, give you tips, tricks on how to crack the GRE.